Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we are going to be showing you how to balance the spring tension between the left hand and the right hand stacks on oboe. We do have a hashtag for you today. It is oboe springs. Make sure you put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win a discount on our saxophone smackdown, which is coming up on the 23rd and 24th of February. We're going to have uh, many technicians from across the United States here to talk about advanced saxophone repair over two days. So you can sign up there at the education section in the musicmedic.com website. That's the Sax Smackdown. And the winner for today, who's going to win a discount on that, is we have two winners. We have one username, and here's the username, uh, qq-hu1bn. So Whatever robot that is, they are going to win a discount on the Sax Smackdown. <laughs> we also have a person with a normal name, uh, Ed Scott. There we go. You also win. So either Ed or QQ, uh, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and I will get your discount on the Sax Smackdown. We also have a key fitting course, which is coming up on the 18th of January. That's going to be a virtual key fitting course. We've been putting out some YouTube, uh, some content on YouTube. This is YouTube. <laughs> We're going to be, every Saturday, we're putting out new key fitting content for the next few weeks. So you yeah. can check out those tutorials and you can see kind of what we're going to be going over in the key fitting class. And then our instructor, Ryan, will be there and he will kind of go very in depth into all of the things that we discuss in our tutorials. And of course, so much more. Ryan also says, happy holidays. He's out in the warehouse with a different haircut and he is kneeling for necks. We're working on our 12.5 M necks out there. So shout out to Ryan. And I think Leroy, that's all the announcements I have. Uh, so last week we talked about it's not last week, but last time we talked about yep. installing a pad, and we're going to be doing some spring stuff today. Um, what are the areas on the oboe that we're going to be talking about or taking a look at in terms of balancing spring tension? Well, first, I, got, I, got, I, got, I think I have to stock up my marshmallows to give Ryan. I to see that. <laughs> I think a s'mores time, yeah. baby. <laughs> anyway, no, um, for spring tension, okay, on oboes. So mainly, it's, mainly what you're going to want to look at is in the stacks. Okay. So, so in the upper joint here, we have, we have the left-hand stack here, and the keys we're going to be looking at are basically going to be C, C, B-flat, and G-sharp. And then the lower stack, we're going to be looking at F-sharp, and then um, basically that key right above E. So it's important to make sure that the spring tension between all those keys are, say, are cohesive, and as the instrument's together, that it actually makes sense and that it's smooth. Um, so we're going to start with the tools you need for this thing. Don't need very much, which is awesome. So complex instrument, simple amount of tools. Very cool. So, just, so if you need to take the thing apart, the parallel duckbill pliers, um, just for checking everything over, uh, feeler gauge, spring hook, which is going to be the most important thing for this procedure. Okay. Screwdriver and a little wooden wedge. Very good. Okay. Very simple. That's what you think. <laughs> so, so we're going to start with the, we're going to start with the upper joint. So the keys that we're going to again we're going to focus on are C, B flat, and G sharp. Um, so what I want you to notice is that at rest that those keys are closed because these are open. The ones I pointed to are closed. They are all the the B flat and C. Are connected to this bridge key right here. So I'm going to actually take a wooden wedge here and open this up so you can take a look at what I'm talking about. So now these are open and they are actuated and controlled by the keys surrounding them. Mm. Each one of these keys has its own spring and its own spring tension. The thing that you don't want is you basically don't want equal spring tension between so like this guy right here, so C and A. You don't want the same spring tension. Why? Very same thing uh, for like saxophone, right? So if, you're, so if you're playing saxophone and you hit that pinky key and play the G sharp, anything on the right hand is going to want to close that G sharp. So same thing. G sharp wants to stay open. You're trying to close that right hand on the saxophone. Mm -hmm. That G sharp is going to fight the whole time. So if it's the same spring tension, it's going to want to fight more and it's going to feel 
I'll say not as cohesive and not as smooth. So you would, so same situation there too. You're going to want to back that spring tension off a little bit. Okay. So it seems, so it seems smooth. And our, and our goal here is to get a smooth action in the left hand as well as the right hand and in between them. Absolutely. Yes. Gotcha. So if we're looking at the, le uh, the upper joint here, so basically what we're going to do is while this is wedged, you can get a good idea of what each key feels like by itself, whether you have to close this, whether you have to hold the little keys shut and check like A or C or any of that other stuff. But the important thing is whatever the spring tension is on the key just below the small one here. So like C for example, that this one, again, there's gonna be no numerical value. There's gonna be no like, like checking the, a numerical thing of how, tight that spring is or anything like that. Okay. The the rule of thumb that I've lived by is the half the tension of what the key below it is. So if I'm looking at C, whatever A feels like, this one's going to be about half of that. Okay. So Good and again, yep. And then same thing, same thing with this guy down here, about half. And then this is the G sharp is not actuated by the bridge, but again, it does act if I hold the G sharp open, it does act independently. So you're going to want to make sure that this key, the spring tension on this key, is less than what this, this is by itself. Okay. So then if we move on to the lower joint, very, very similar thing with this little guy right here above the, above the E key. You're going to want to hold that down and then push on this guy. Get, get the feel of what the spring tension is and then push on this and make sure it feels about half of what that is. And then once this, and once you get that, I'll say the balance of the, of the half spring tension on that, it should feel very, very good, especially when you put the things together. Now, there is one of the key that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna make sure that you check the spring tension on, and you're probably gonna wonder why this one, it doesn't make any sense, it's by itself, hmm. is this F sharp key right here. Yes, by itself on the lower joint, it does interact with nothing. But when you put it together, it interacts with three things, three different keys on this upper joint. Mm. So on this side, on the back side here, you can see that bridge key as I'm pushing the F sharp. This little, this part of the bridge key moves and it, and it interacts. Let me take that wedge out of here. It interacts with this bridge key on the upper joint. This bridge key actually has a, has a spring of its own. So there's one spring, and then each one of these keys has a spring. So there's one, two, three springs that this one key actually has to operate and fight against. So once it's together, you can see that when I push that, mm. it has to move all that stuff. So this one, you have to back off as well, making it so the feel you're going to want Again, is hold the, hold that little key down by E, push this down, and at least half of what this feels like, because again, it's interacting with three other things up here. It's gonna almost feel too light. It's the only thing I can tell you. It's gonna feel like it's too light. There's not enough spring tension on it, or whatever. Disregard all, all normal forces of nature. <laughs> okay. Because once you put this thing together, and then it pushes on all this other stuff, it's gonna feel it's going to actually feel smooth and cohesive and together. Which is our, our goal. Which is absolutely the goal. So for uh, the bottom joint, Leroy, on yes. the F-sharp pad, mm -hmm. we're going to actually lighten the spring tension. And then on the E and D, those get, I don't know what to say, like a standard amount of spring tension. Yeah, so like the E and D here, these will be normal. The key right above E will be half, just like the C and the B flat in the upper joint. And then this F sharp will be at least half of what these by themselves will be. Okay, very good. So Leroy, and this is kind of a silly question, but how do you actually adjust the spring tension on a spring? Hmm. Not a silly question, but a good one. So that's where this little spring hook comes into play. Very easy, simple tool. So what I will do again is I will take that wooden wedge and I'll just use the upper joint for the example here. I will put that underneath that bridge. The other thing you can do is you can straight up take it off if you want, but 
if you don't want to and you want to just do, I'll say either something quick or just something to kind of just get it into ballpark. Okay. This is a great way to do it without having to like hold it here and be a contortionist. Okay. So I'll put the wedge there. And then while those are open, you can follow the hinge tube in the back here and look at the posts. And then you can just locate the springs from those posts that coordinate with the keys that you're wanting to actually back the spring tensions off of. So if you're at, if you're holding the instrument like this, and the basically the, the the hinge rod is I'll say away from you. Okay. All the springs are actually going to be to pointing, to or going to want to come toward you, basically mm. wanting to open the keys up. Okay. Okay. So when I say push away from or back it off, you're actually literally in this case, if you're holding it like this, you're actually going to be pushing the spring away from you. Okay. So if you look really carefully here, there's a little notch. On your spring, spring hook. So you're basically going to just take that notch, grab the spring, and then just push. Okay. So you're going to push it towards the hinge rod. Correct. Okay. So, and closer to the post than away from the post, you can actually get good leverage on the spring. Hmm. You'll basically just go in there, find it, and just push it a little bit. They're very thin springs on oboe. Okay. There's nothing like saxophone or clarinet. They're very, very thin. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure. So I would just push it a little bit and then check it, push it, and check it. Um, there might be a point where you go too far where the key may not even open at all. So in that case, you would just unhook the spring, put a little more on it, and then put it back, hook, hook the spring back on there, and then I'll say start from square one again and just go until that magic spot's found. Okay, and then how do we adjust the tension? And so I would assume that would be for the lower stack as well. How do we yes. adjust the tension between the stacks or between both joints? Um, well, make sure it's together. Okay. And hopefully you've already backed that F sharp off. Hmm. Like I had said, at least half compared to like the E and the D down below. Okay. Um, at that point, you're basically just going to want to I'll say just play it or not even just play it, but just, but just go, like, go down, like just keep plunking your fingers down like this and right. make sure things feel even. If they don't feel even, especially on that F sharp key, because that's the one that basically interacts and controls the, the balance between the two joints, either put more or take less, depending on how it feels. A lot, a lot of this, a lot of this, adjustment part of this thing a lot of it's going to be feel and finesse mm. so i mean the tools again are very simple but it's a lot of it's going to be the feel on your fingers and the tension between everything that's going to really make this adjustment come through do materials play a, a role in this at all not a lot but a little bit depending on what's going on so um if we're going to focus on anything here i'll focus on the like this part right here so like the adjustment parts so where those little screws are if you look on the back, it goes to the it goes to little feet on there. So a lot of times there'll be cork or some sort of Teflon or something like that. Um, I usually like to use either a, a, like a Teflon coated cork or a very thin cork or just Teflon or something like that. Something that um, when it's when it interacts, it can slide if there's movement. Um, something like natural cork or felt or something like that, that's a big no-go because it wants to grab and, it, and if it does move, it actually starts to actually break apart and not be very useful. Okay, very good. And then if we, we went over the simple tools. Any special tools needed for this job, specialty tools? Yes, one important one, patience. Uh, <laughs> it's not a tool you okay. can buy. It's a tool that you either have to work on or you just have it. Gotcha. Um, okay. And, part, and a lot of it, like I said, is a lot of it's because it's a back and it could be a back and forth. Hmm. You know, you might have to like, you might have to try it two, maybe three times or something like that until you get to right where you want it. And then what is the general order of adjusting the spring tension mm. on the stacks? That's a good question. Um, I usually, I've always basically just started from the top and worked my way down. So if I'll start in the upper joint, I'll do, I'll do the C, I'll do the B flat, I'll do the G sharp, and then I'll go down here to the lower joint, I'll do the F sharp while looking at these two keys, and then I'll do that key just above the E. Okay. Well, Leroy, excellent. Thank you so much for that demonstration. Uh, very concise, yet thorough. Uh, if you have any other questions about adjusting oboe springs or oboe spring tension, make sure you put them in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. That will help us to continue to do this in 2024. Make sure you take 
Oboe Springs. Put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win a discount on the entrance fee to the Sax Smackdown, which we have on the 23 and 24th of February. That's coming up. We're going to have there. saxophone techs from all over the U.S., and they're going to be here talking about mouthpieces, uh, advanced techniques and repair, manufacturing, engraving. There's oh, a bunch yeah. of information on the education section of musicmedic.com, so check that out. Uh, I think that is going to do it for us right now. We're going to be back next week. Um, we're going to be off next week, but we're going to play uh, our Neopads installation class next week. So yes. that'll, if you are interested in Neopads, uh, go ahead and you'll get a chance to see that class that we offer for free once every couple times Let's a just year. say every so often. Every so often. Let's just go there. I like uh, that one. <laughs> but that was the class that we had on December 7th. So we're going to yes. be replaying that on December 27th. So thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it for now. Happy holidays and all that good stuff. And until next time, happy repairing.